morning everybody welcome back to the opportunistic trader it is november 1st first day of november it's 10 a.m we've got a lot of earnings coming out today a lot of interesting things in the equity market we're joined by tom mcintee uh uh how's it going tom very good mike thanks for having me yeah absolutely looking forward to it equities have been uh very active to say the least the past few weeks uh you've been joining us talking about uh earnings opportunities, different ways of structuring good risk reward opportunities. Uh, I th let's start off by just talking about general market thoughts. You know, here we are it's, yesterday, we had the past two days, we had our first two day rally uh, that we saw in over a month yesterday. Uh, it's been a big move. S&P is over 100 points off its low from Monday morning. Uh, right now, the S&P is only up three. The Nasdaq's down 18. So it looks like Nasdaq's underperforming. I got Facebook who came out with earnings. Now it's trading down two bucks. Uh, Apple before earnings, which we're going to get into right now, is trading down a buck fifty. Google's down seven bucks. Netflix down three thirty. Uh, what are your general thoughts on tech and anything that sticks out to you on the market here? Um, well, I'm of the. I'm, I guess we spoke uh, Tuesday. I'm of the mind that I think a lot of the. Well, there's only four. Uh, that I think the Fang stocks are kind of washed out. Like that doesn't mean they may not they may not probe through their lows, but I kind of think they're washed out. And I, you want I think you want to plan from the wrong side if you get a chance. Like like Amazon, I mean, you had a stealth ten percent rally from trough to tip Monday afternoon to yesterday, whatever pre noon, I guess. Right? I think it was fourteen seventy. Uh, yeah, fourteen seventy fifteen twenty. Yeah. Am I right? Was it fourteen seventy low sixteen twenty three top? Something I, I didn't say, well, 1630. I think it was yesterday. I think it was 1623. Pre market, we traded 1630 today, right? Okay, but I, I think yesterday's high was 1623. I think the low on Monday was 1470. Am I right or wrong? I'm not, you know, I don't have that. Uh, I'll pull it up any, up. anytime they get past like three digits, I start to lose focus, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know. But that's you know, it, it, it was 10 percent, yeah, just about 1470. It was yeah. uh, somewhere 1475 range, so that's an extraordinary, it's an extraordinary rally. Uh, and by virtue of that fact, I'm sure nobody had it. Right? It, it wouldn't have rallied if anybody did. Um, so I think what you're getting here is hold on one second. I got uh, interesting. Now, Nasdaq's down about 27 points, SP's up one. And you know, those names I just mentioned before, uh, technology and FANG names are not really trading well. Amazon is the only name that's uh, green right now, and it's up five bucks. Uh, which is only a third of a percent. Netflix is down a percent and a quarter. Google's down a percent. So the 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 outperformers for the year, those Fang names, the technology high flyers, are not really trading so well right now to start the month. Uh, what are your thoughts on the Facebook number that came out, and, the, and more importantly, the price action after? What are your thoughts on that? Um, Facebook, as you know, I, I got you know I got a lot of soft longs in there with some spreads. I also did a hard long against an Apple thing right in here. But, you know, I sold the 3565 strangle, 135, 165 strangle expiring tomorrow. And I bought the deck 270s for about a 50 cent credit. So that worked out OK. I mean, you're getting paid to sell options. I mean, you know, you and I are like a broken record on this every time we come on. But like from August and September, you had to buy them. You had to be a buyer of options, I thought. Look, I mean, and obviously there could be a drawdown involved. No one's getting the bottom. But I think in here, you got to be a seller of options. You're getting paid to sell them, structure things where you can leverage that uh, inflated volatility. And like I said, hey, it's inflated for a reason, and I get it, and that's fine. But it doesn't mean we can't scrape out some money on the way to wherever these stocks are going. Um, as far as the banks, yeah, I think they're kind of washed out. It doesn't mean they're not going to trade lower, but I think I want to trade them on the long side. I don't like Apple. I think Apple, um, I think the market would... I, 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 and this is going to sound like something on CNBC, but what the hell? Um, I think an Apple gap fill down to 192.20 or wherever, that, wherever it gapped from on Nov 1 from July 31 to, to I'm sorry, August 1, from the, last, the previous earnings, that would be very, very bullish to me. That would mean they'd wash out all this, all these momentum schmucks in here. We've been chasing it up in, in total disregard. For any, I mean, it, it, they don't even let it come in. I mean, it come, it, I mean, here we are. I did some spreads, and you can see them in the chat. Uh, I guess a month ago, I was the stock was maybe six or seven, maybe two twenty, mid two twenties. Uh, I was buying. I thought the the, the the correlation between Apple and the Qs was just ridiculous. It blown out, Apple outperforming dramatically. Correlation blown out, usually about a point seven three correlated. At the time, about a point two, when Apple got to its apex at two. I think it was two thirty. I know. It was, I think the high was like two thirty-two. But I think it was trading around two thirty end of September, and we spot. Yeah, end of end of August, 
I mean, the stock moved 20% in a month, which is, you know, that's extraordinary. That's biotech kind of stuff. And I think it, and it just has a committee, even with this NAS, even with this NASDAQ sell-off or this FANG sell-off and all the rest, the rest of them are just thrown to the freaking, you know, they're, they're garbage. They're a Nestle. Nobody wants them, but we're going to hold on to Apple. That's going to save the day. Well, I just think I got a contrarian viewpoint. I think everybody can't be right because that's just the way the game is. I, I just don't see. I, I think the surprise is going to be in the downside because nobody thinks it can go down. Look, I did a spread in here. You know, I have no problem selling. It. I'll be totally honest with you. Larry knows me pretty well. I got no problem selling it. And even when it was trading 220 and accused were, I think, 187. You can go back and look. It was probably mid Um, I wasn't willing to call the top of the thing because it was just so freaking relentless. And it just marched inexorably higher. And just, you know, I don't know if they're greedy longs and panic shorts, whatever you want to call them. But I was I, I did some spreads where I was just swapping 40 Delta calls for 20. Yeah, I was doing uh, 40 Delta, 25 Delta call spreads like that. Buying the 25 Deltas and the Qs. And uh, selling you know, one thing I just want to jump in. President Trump just tweeted and he actually said, you know, just had a phone call with China. I'm summarizing here. Just had a very nice phone call with China. We are discussions are moving along nicely and we are meetings are being scheduled at the G20 um also had a good discussion on north korea so you know yesterday there was some talk that they were not going to meet so uh, i think the market might be uh optimistic on the fact that it sounds like trump is saying that they will meet so that's just coming out right now and i see the smt now everything's good and uh, we just bounced we were trading 08 now we're trading 2720 i don't know if it's exactly on those headlines but uh you know we did bounce on that Sure, it does. It followed a bouncing ball, right? That's what you, that's what you, that's what you've been getting the last week. The yeah. last week change. So I think Apple, I think Apple's got unfinished business. I think Apple's got to trade down to one ninety two. Then I'd be constructive on the constructive. I sound like uh, then, I, then I'd be bullish on the stock. That doesn't mean the S and P is going to be lower. Look, I mean, it, I guess it, I just mean the Fang stocks would be lower. The index, the indices or indexes would be lower because of the weight of Apple. So it doesn't are mean you still positioning. So you think that we're going down there? I mean. Either there are two ways we get down there. Either they themselves have disappointing earnings and today and then it moves lower, or two is the market really would have to get beaten up for Apple to go down there without bad earnings. I think um, it's got specific to Apple. I don't think it's gonna be a market uh, I don't think it's gonna be a market event that forces yeah. that below. I think you've got to shake this out at its core. And at its, look, I mean, everybody's hiding there, right? I mean, that's where- You know, Apple's hard. numbers, and I don't have the exact, um, like the last six or eight times that they've released, but they tend to, uh, they, they've been trading pretty well after earnings, but it's interesting because they're always more on the cautious side and they like to uh, under, uh, under promise and over deliver. Uh, and so yes, it'll be true. interesting to see, you know, especially in this market tape, if they were to, you know, um, be cautious on what they're seeing about the holidays or what their next rollouts are, things like that, if the market uh, continues to support them, they have, like we said, you know, Apple's traded very well in this uh, recent volatility. Here we are at two eighteen fifty. It's been, you know, it's uh, relative to everything else. It's held in very well. Oh, like it, yeah, there, there's no question. It, it's bulletproof. And I'm looking at a lot of stocks I trade here, which have had, I mean, waterfall declines. I mean, I don't trade. I didn't trade. Boy, AMD, Caterpillar. But, Caterpillar. Yeah. Was, was, you know, I, 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 you know, I was short the thing up in the, I started selling at 144, went to 157 on me. And I think I covered it all around 139. I was a little bit too early on that one. Uh, you know, I think traded down to like 113. That's yeah. Yeah. 112. I, and I tried to do a spread. There was a spread I put in the chat and the equity thing I was bidding for. Didn't get it. It would have been a home fucking. Oh, sorry about that. Whoa. Me. Whoa. Whoa. I know. But, uh, that would, that definitely fits under the waterfall, uh, uh, waterfall criteria that you were talking about before. Yeah. And, and vol was jacked. You're trading 43 volatility. Uh, there was some one by twos. I want to do the 122, 122, 127, one by two. I think I was bidding uh, bulls, bears, banks. I was bidding eight cents. I could have paid 11 cents. I didn't. And the thing, you know, the stocks in the, this is like the perfect scenario right up in here. Uh, okay, here's another one. Um, so Facebook, I like. I mean, I think Facebook's okay. I think Facebook's okay relative to Apple. Put it that way. 150 against I don't two. love the price action, actually, after this earnings report. Um, just the way that yesterday, you know, we traded 156, came back down below 150. Today, trading down a buck 50. Um, no view. I, I just, the price action itself, sometimes after earnings, you want to see it uh, continue to trade higher and uh, continue strong. Uh, kind of, I guess, the idea. No, you're right. You know, that's continued a point support that's, and continued that's... people looking to buy dips. Um, uh, you know, it's, uh, I don't know. Um, no, that's fine. That, that's a fair view. That's fine. That's what makes it market. No problem. I have no... You probably, are, you're as apt to be right as I am. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm a no view on Facebook. I'm just pointing at the price action itself. Um, the price action is bad. No, no doubt about it. I wouldn't. I would not. Uh, all right. So let's take a look at Apple today. If we wanted to be structured bullish, I guess question number one is what's the straddle pricing and what are they uh, estimating for uh, market reaction here? And what are different ways to play it if you're bullish? And what's a one way to play it if you're bearish? All right, done. Let's uh, let's look at it two ways here. Uh, Apple. Let's see if I can share my screen over here. New share. This is going to be. Let me see if I got that. Look at that. Huh? 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 How'd that work? Okay. Yep. Here. Um, now, uh, Apple's been usually, you know, it started to move to, to the first of the month and stuff like that recently. So now what you got to be, yeah, you know, the, the usual straddle has been about a, uh, it, it, what's it imply? Today it's implying about a, um, to 17 and a half, 620, 11, 20, about a five, uh, five and a half percent move. Now, here you only got one day. So it's, it's obviously it's as binary as Amazon was, any of these one day reporters, one day left post earnings. So Apple has one day to trade. You got one day to hold these things and one day to be short these things, however you want to play it. Now, I went back eight quarters like I always do, and the average extreme up or down, one day move next day. So obviously it's going to be, Gap related. Uh, it's been about a five percent mover. Okay, five point one percent mover. All right, with four of the eight quarters, four percent or less. <laughs> now, what's interesting here is if you follow me here as I go here, and we, you and I have been talking about this a lot. We saw it with Tesla, if you remember, um, with the twenty four, the variance, uh, with the variance swap in Tesla. I mean, we were talking about that the twenty five delta put uh, in relation to the twenty five delta call. On a thirty-day basis, it was it was kind of elevated. Well, the same thing is happening here, and I, you know that's I guess to be expected with earnings. But what you're getting here is the as you, I'm, you can see me scrolling over here, right? Okay, um, the, the the mean differential between the 25, 25 delta put twenty five delta call is about two point three on, and at the money volatility of twenty two and a half. So that'd be roughly ten and a half percent ballpark. Currently, it's trading about six point eight. On a 37.3, which is about, you know, 17%, 51. Yeah, about, that's about uh, 17%. So it is jacked. The 25 delta put is is elevated. So what I want to do is two things. I I I have two plays to try and structure this. Now, initially, what I wanted to do yesterday would be to would be to buy downside uh, vertical put spreads. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, hopefully I get that move down to 192, get that gap felt and, you know, and be as adroit as possible and trade out of it. But I think the price of these puts are somewhat prohibitive. Uh, they are prohibitive. So I don't want to play. I don't want to play that way. So I got two plays for you. Uh, you, you do it any way you want to do it. Um, the way I'm doing it is I am trying to use that. I want let's do what we did in Tesla. Let's use that elevated put skew. Let's use the fact that the tails are being bid up and try to take advantage of it. And hopefully, maybe these guys are right. So there's two ways to play this. And the initial one I had was, and I'll keep it simple for you guys, because I, I was going to, what, what I would do is buy these 232 and a half calls <clears throat> down here, November 16 expiration. You see this, obviously, right? Yep. November 232 and a half calls, about, I don't know where they are right now. I'm on tape play with this thing here. And sell the November 205. So November 16, 205 puts. Okay. And at that particular point in time, I could tell what, what do I take in right now? When I did it, I could take it about a buck. I don't know where I, I don't know where it is right now. <laughs> I'm gonna hit this thing up. Uh, that's a good spread. Now, the way to, the way to, you, you don't have to go in and sell the stock and do this thing one up. What you could do to you know to to um mitigate doing all this kind of stuff, or you know, we, I don't want to get it as be as complex as possible. You could buy the 232 and a half put. Which is what I'm, just essentially what I'm doing, and sell the 205 put, and I was bidding thirteen dollars for it. It's a thirteen dollar debit, so it's it is a twenty seven and a half dollar put spread that you're paying thirteen dollars for. You're betting thirteen and make fourteen and a half, so you're getting like one point one x. Not the greatest thing in the world, but that's one thing where you can avail yourself to skew. And I think if you get the move down, if you get the move down, it's going to be you know it'll really appreciate. But here's here's a better one for you guys. I think uh, people might like this one. I like, um, I want, I just want to target that November. I want to target that, that gap fill at the 192 and a half line. 
So what I want to do is I want to buy, of course, the, the landscaper got me just now. Uh, the November 190, November 16, 190 puts. Okay, I want to buy those. They're trading about a 50 volatility when I looked at them. And I want to sell next week's November 190, two and a half puts. Okay, I'm going to buy the 190 puts. I'm going to sell the 192 and a half put. Wow, those have surprisingly a fair amount of juice in them. Sure they do. What am I paying for that spread? Not nothing. <clears throat> Looks like I can do it for zero. Wow. Okay, so now that spread here. Now, if, if I'm right, I, the reason I sell the 192 and a half line is because I, I think the stock, you know, hopefully, the stock trades there. And I think if, if it did trade there, it would probably bounce. It probably bounced kind of hard. Anyway, but now I have the 190 puts to avail myself, you know, to, to take advantage of that. And if the stock gets, does get that at 192, 195, that spread's going to expand. And if I knock volatility down to 30 in the November 16 options and down to 35 in the November 9 options, I got room all the way down to 189 on <clears throat> November 7th. Okay. And obviously, on an up move to 275, wherever the hell it's going to go, I got I can do it for zero. So it's a rip up. It's nothing. That's a good way to play it. I'll put that in the chat. That's a real cheap way to play it to take it into fashion, a, a, a cheap look. If you're taking in, you're selling the November 9 at about a 60 vial. You're buying the November 16 at roughly about a, I think it's 50. Uh, yeah, about a 50 vial. That's a good spread. You knock vial down 30 to 35. You, you, you knock them down 30 in the November 16th. 35 and the November 9s, you, know, you, you got room down to 188 in that thing. That's all you really care about. Now, if you if, if you want to you want to do apples to apples, you can do the 190 line against the 190 line, and that would cost you roughly uh, about 20 cents, 20 to 25 cents. Now, the, you got another good spread. You're gonna get multiples of X. If we get a move down, even if <laughs> we get a move down in, in below 200 in the next week or so, that spread's gonna expand dramatically. Both of those calendars both of those time spreads will expand dramatically the initial spread i gave you we're just taking a vertical spread we're bidding 13 to make 14. Now obviously you gotta you gotta size it up accordingly uh we're betting 13 to make 14 on and we're, and we're just leveraging that inflated volatility in those puts and i guess rightfully so but you know, the, the calls are cheap relative to the puts so that's why i'd rather buy the upside I'd rather buy the upside call. And when I say this, I'd be buying the 232 and a half call and selling stock, which is the same thing as buying the put, right? Uh, I, you know, I just want to make sure everyone understands that. I buy call. If I buy 10 calls, I will say we'll keep it simple at $2 and sell the stock at 218 Well, <clears throat> I paid... What have I paid? I paid six. I, I paid sixteen and a half dollars for the two thirty-two and a half put, right? And if I add two dollars onto the strike, the two thirty-two and a half call, I get two thirty-four and a half, and I, I sell stock at two eighteen. So it's sixteen and a half is my net debit for that put. That is a synthetic put. That is the same thing as going out in the market and buying that put, buying that put outright. So in order to obviate any type of confusion, I fashioned it to you know, like obviate, Mike. I was waiting to drop that one on you. Uh, mm -hmm. by the 232 and a half put, uh, just straight up, okay? But when you see what a lot of my stuff, I'll fashion it where I'm buying the call, selling the stock, selling the downside put. I guess that's a risk reversal, and it, it, that's a good trade. The calendars, I like the one, you, you're out there playing, you want, you, you want to have some action here? I like the 190, 192 and a half calendar. Buy the November 16, 190s, and I'll clean it up and put it in the chat. Buy the November 16, 190 puts, sell the November 9, 192 and a half puts. Because I'm of the mind, and I think you're of the mind, and Larry's of the mind, I guess most of them, which probably means we're all wrong, that I don't think this is over. I think there's some more downside to come in here. I mean, after we get to what I think might be a, a substantial kind of rally here. But um, I think you're getting a chance to trade around that Apple position for very little money and maybe make multiples of X. And that's all you're looking at, though. I mean, what, what, what you're, you're able to fashion trades right now with a little bit of risk, a lot of upside. And, and we've said it many, many times, volatility equals opportunity. And that's what you're getting right now. Um, that's my Facebook. My Facebook goes lower. Uh, um, yeah, what else? There, there are other earnings. There are, yeah, you want to look at an upside trade in Apple? Yeah, well, let's, well, let's, let's play the rank. At, uh, yeah, exactly. Let's take a look at your <laughs> bullish Apple, bullish the markets here, uh, thinking, uh, you know. Yeah, fine. That's fair. That's fair. 
everybody in the world owns an Apple, or not everybody in the world owns an Apple, but a lot let's of people do, let's... and uh, everybody will be. Is that I get that's the bullish side. Right, right. For Apple's sake, let's hope everyone doesn't own one. <laughs> well, in a way, that's fine if they do because they're upgrading, uh, you know, every eighteen months. Yeah, that's true. Just get them in the nope. ecosystem. Oh, I love that word. Oh, well, the supply chain. Yeah, the Apple ecosystem. I can see Melissa Lee as we're speaking, as, as you're saying those words. Well, I mean, the average movie has been about a five percent or so. Five percent of this two eighteen is about eleven bucks. Give it a take two twenty eight. I mean. In this environment, do you see it trading to, trading through that all time high, you know, relatively quickly? You know, way out there. one day, maybe I don't know. Uh, two thirty two and a half. Yeah, you know what I would do? You want to play? You, you you want some kind of trade in there? I would buy. Well, I don't see any type of what I would deem tradable edge in these november two options i think they're fair i think uh what you've got to be cognizant of is the fact that this is a one day uh binary event in apple which heretofore really hasn't happened too much it's usually been a tuesday night expert it's usually been a tuesday night release and gave you a three-day play so now it's a one day play and i you know it's a little bit elevated but i don't think as look i mean facebook was nine percent on an historic seven percent move amazon was nine percent on a historic seven percent move i mean this is five on five i mean so it's 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 staying in line with that, that so that the skew me, you're I, seeing you're not really seeing much of a skew there no no you're not seeing a lot of you you, you are seeing downside skew definitely there's the put prices are elevated no doubt about it so if you want to leverage stuff, that's how I do it. Now, on the upside, I mean, let's look at the heat. These are November seconds. I mean, what do you, I mean? What do you? Feel? I mean, the skew here. I mean, it, it, if you, if you watch, it's it's you know it's clustered around 69, 70, 60. Yeah. I mean, there's some decent. You know, it's it's taking on a. What's what's interesting here is it's got a real classic equity equity type of skew because what you, what you have now is i'll show you this i can actually show you this it's skewed by delta uh it's what i have up there okay yeah look at this this is a you see this down here i'm highlighting this yeah is what I'm, this is what we've been talking about here this is a 25 delta call 25 delta put 40 25 delta call about 33 and a half and a seven percent premium on a 37 and a half volatility trading 21 the put call premium as a percentage of at the money vol is trading at 21. The 52 week average is 10. I mean, that's extraordinary. So the, the, the downside is bid up. The downside is bid up. Okay, so you know what? So then I, I, I will do something to, to avail myself of that. I mean, which the downside's bid up, the upside is cheap. So I mean, 250, 33 cents. I mean, if it's, you get a 4% move, the stock's going to be what, 200, and we'll say, we'll call it like, if you get a 5% move, the stock's about 230. If I leverage the 230 line from next week, uh, 219, well, yeah, I mean, this, yeah. I would do something like this. Do you really like it? You're, you're, you're super bullish on the, on the thing? I'd buy the two, I'd, I'd buy, I'd buy two of the two, I can't, it's tough to buy two freaking options here. Um, you know what? I'd probably do a calendar. That's what I would do. I'd probably go out here. Uh, 230, 235 is a 161, 232s, something like this. I'd buy November. Yeah, this is what I like. This is good. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll clean this up, obviously, and put it in the chat because I, I wasn't looking up, Mike. I only look one way on this stuff. <laughs> That's a man with an open mind, right? Uh, 235 calls in no, on November 16 expiration, about a 38 vol trading about $1.63 on take the lay here. Uh, November 9, 232 and a half. I think that I think that 230 line, that certainly that 232 and a half line, which is where the all-time high resides, might provide some type of stout resistance. So let's leverage that. Let's let's look at that as something I want to sell. So I would sell next week's next week's November 9, 
two thirty two and a half by November. And I can sell those for about a dollar sixty or whatever the hell it might be right now. And by uh, the two thirty fives of November sixteen at a dollar sixty three. That, that's for a nominal debit. Real good spread. That's a good spread. You're taking it about eight, eight, thirty thirty eight against. Uh, Thinking about six clicks. That's a good spread. That's not a bad way to play. You want to play the upside. You want to get an upside look. Stock trades up to 235. The November nines are obviously in the wrong. The stock trades up to 235. The spread's going to be about even. Stock trades at 230. It's a home run. That's the way you want to play it. But that, yeah, I, I'll, once again, I'll clean that up and put it in. That's another way to play it. Uh, you want to talk about some other earnings things, right? Correct, though? Yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to uh, take a look at Starbucks real quick. Was the old SB? Starbucks, the old eight dollar latte. Yeah, I can't wait. I can't get enough of those. I can't stand that coffee. I have some. I, you know, I, I'm a simpleton, so I have simple taste. So um, I like the guy. You know, I, I like that uh, ex Taliban guy who puts his fingers in the grounds outside the American Stock Exchange. He was he was my hero. He had the best coffee, uh, best coffee available. Loved it. Paid a dollar. I walk up. He'd have two cups. He'd have two 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 uh, large regulars waiting for me. Uh, who, okay. Wait, but, wait. I gotta go back. Who was that? There was a guy. I thought he was. I thought he was a uh, an ex. I, I would always kid him. He's he was probably ex Taliban who worked with the United States military. He showed up. It's it's just. Just it's wanted just, to confirm that I heard uh, you say former Taliban guy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the guy was that, the guy was from. I think he was from Afghanistan or somewhere. Uh, but anyway, he was there in the nineties. Unconfirmed so, report of that. Right. No, unconfirmed. Yeah, allegedly. Uh, no, real good guy. Was there in the nineties? I go out always buy two lodges for every morning. So uh, it's nine eleven. The, the Amex is closed. I'm going. To, I got to take the Sixth Avenue to get to get to Penn Station. It's the Amex. I mean, the, the, obviously the courtly the Trade Center thing is closed, right? I can't get. To, I can't take the. I can't, I can't take the train to Rector Street. So it's two years, Mike. Not till more, a year and a half. March of 03, the Rector Street Station reopens for the one and the nine. Get there, come back. Um, I make the turn onto uh, Broadway. Or Trinity, I'm sorry. I make the turn up to Trinity. I walk up the block. I make the turn up to Trinity. The guy moved. The, the guy had reestablished. He he meets me halfway. He's on foot, and his cart is all the way back in front of the Amex. Meets me on foot. Walks. Haven't seen me in a year and a half. Walks over to me with a paper bag. With a paper bag full of dope. No, with a paper bag. Too large. Too uh, too uh, too uh, too regular large, right, sir? And I'm like, yeah. I go to pay him. He goes, no, it's on me. Welcome back. I'm like, you know what? That's a smart freaking guy right there. He remembered, number one, it's a year and a half. I was I was giving my business to George's Diner. But when this guy met me there, he had me at the jump right there. You know, and, and, and that's my coffee. I, I always I always like coffee when, when, when the guy puts his fingers in the ground. Like just a, a so big to confirm, you're bearish on Starbucks because they don't offer that customer support. <laughs> they, don't, they don't. Exactly. I want. And so that we're now looking at the on the Star short side of Starbucks for earnings later <laughs> today. I mean, does that sound that, that does sound somewhat insane? You're, okay, let's. Do, I'll, I'll do a quick one with Starbucks. I mean, which way do you want to look? I don't care. I, I'm, I'm agnostic on it. I, I don't no, like that, as am I. Zero view whatsoever. I was just uh, wondering right, if there's something. Yeah, if, yeah. if we did want to look on the uh, bearish side, give me a, uh, a put spread or uh, some some. No, sort of earnings are tonight, right? Let's do this quickly. All right. You, you see that box that pop that highlights that? I can't scroll over it without it closing. So I'm looking at the you know, like the average the, the nightly close has been fifty one. Yeah, it was fifty one point a dollar twenty. It's about a two percent mover. You know, I'm just looking at one day. You only got one day with these options, right? Fifty nine thirty eight two, about a three percent mover. Uh, here, sixty fifty five four. That's about we'll say we'll say seven percent. I know it's only about six and a half. Fifty four eighty seven up to fifty six ninety four in the apex. Two dollars, say uh, say four percent. Uh, here, fifty nine fifty fifty three forty one six bucks. Uh, we'll say ten. And here, sixty one thirty fifty nine two three percent. 58, 46, 3, we'll say uh, 5%, 3 and 5, 3, 7. I got one more to do. And here at 5177, $2 to say 3%. So that's uh, 5, 12, 16, 26, 29, 34, 37 on 8 is about what, 4.5, roughly 32? Yeah, about 4.6. Okay, so about a 4.6% 4, 4 move. You want to look higher? Where are the technicals in this thing, Mike? I haven't seen it in a long time. I, I, I traded it. I, I, I bought. I did an earnings spread on this thing. A uh, Starbucks S B U X. I did an earnings thing on this thing. I, I to the upside, much to my uh, chagrin. I never. Uh, I, I got the move way after I was out of it. 
uh, full chart. Hold on one sec. Uh, one year full chart. Where was it right now? 58 bucks. Um, 58.90. Uh, oh, wow. You know, Mike, you know what's interesting here? I look at this. Um, yeah, new share. Watch this, Mike. Let's see how quickly I can. I'm getting a little cocky here, so be very careful. Um, could you see this, Mike? I have to write chart, right? You see this gap? This could be a gap fill from 125. Is that right? 125? I don't think that's right. So you're seeing $60. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 125 meaning the date? Yeah, yeah, no, that wouldn't be sixty. I mean, I, I look at this this recent high, these tops here. This this gap fill would be about sixty dollars and uh, what is that? Sixty forty. I and mean, I guess it traded above there, sixty seventy. It got up in here. Boy, it keeps getting keeps getting up here. So it's a sixty one dollar stock. Interesting. That's four four percent would be about two dollars and thirty cents. Um, okay, so six. So sixty. 60, 61, 62 is even money. Seven, um, even money. You got room up to sixty-three. You got a four percent move. You haven't ever had a move outside of that. Uh, this is November two. November nine. Sixty-one, sixty-seven. Hey, here's what I want. Here's what I, I'm going to do. This. I'm just like, well, hey, I want to sell. You're right. I'm going to leverage that sixty and a half line. I'll play it. I mean. 232 puts me at 61. That's a 4% move. But the stocks, I mean, I think there's, you, know, you got out, see, the, you got extrinsic uh, market uh, pressures and stuff like that. So I would think here, um, maybe you sell the 60 and a half line or the 61 here. Sell the 60 and a half line tomorrow, 55 cents. Buy the 61 line, say 60 cents, pay a nickel for that spread, cheap upside. Stock gets, I mean, if you do get the upside, I think there's going to be some, you know, stiff resistance to the 60 and a half line. If it gets there, the game on, because you're 60 and a half shorts go out worthless. Now you're on the 61s. That'd be trading at about, a, you know, probably about you know, 50 cents. So be, you pay nothing, but you pay a nickel for it. You're getting 10, nine X right there. Or, or for a little, if you want to be a little bit uh, more or less, if you, you, you want to be a little bit more risk averse, I'd buy like a 61 and a halves, November 9. 45 cents, sell the 61s at 40. Either one of those spreads works. Pay a nickel either way. That's a cheap upside look. And <clears throat> um, if and I'll look at, if you want to look at where, this is what we got to do. We always go through this. We always go through this uh, when we speak. And you want to, this is a vol chart. Do you have that here? No, I got to check, I got to check, I got to change. Here we go. Here we go. Boom. Okay, cool. Now, this is a volatility chart and stuff. I think obviously, I mean, this the the rise in volatility has obviously coincided with you know with the general market rise, right? In VIX, so you've gone from roughly sixteen to an apex of thirty ballpark. So I would say, let's split it. I mean, I, I'm going to say vol comes in halfway, twenty two ish like that. I mean, you got to realize I'm looking at date. I'm looking to hold options for about. You know, this is what seven, maybe ten, you know, eight, nine days. That's it. So I say vol comes in about twenty-two. So I want to look here. I got to. I want to collapse volatility. Um, if the stock's trading at sixty-one, the sixty-one and a halves with with five days to go, right? Because uh, and we're trading at twenty-three vol and forty-four cents.